Question 5 from Section 1 of the 2018 Higher Physics Exam. Enceladus is a moon of Saturn. The mass of Enceladus is 1.08 times 10 to the power 20 kilograms. The mass of Saturn is 5.68 times 10 to the power 26 kilograms. And we're told that the gravitational force of attraction between Enceladus and Saturn is 7.24 times 10 to the power 19 newtons. Our job is to find the orbital radius of Enceladus around Saturn. Remember, a moon is an object which orbits around another planet, so Enceladus is going to be orbiting around Saturn. Now, in order to do this problem, we have to use the Newton's law of gravitation, a very famous law which we'll write down as follows. It's F, you can find it in the data book, F equals G, the universal gravitational constant, times M1, and we'll give Saturn the title M1, multiplied by M2, we'll give Enceladus the title of M2, and we divide that by the radius between the two planets squared. That's very important. Now, our first job is to try and rearrange the universal law of gravitation so that we have R squared uh, on top, and we can actually take the square root of the expression. So let's do this now. We cross-multiply F R squared, and that's going to equal to G M1 and M2. We want R squared on top on its own, so R squared equals G M1 M2, and it's going to be divided by the force of attraction. We don't want R squared, we want R, so we have to take R, and we have to take the square root of that expression, so it's going to be the square root of G M1 M2 all over the force. So now we've got a situation we can calculate the value for R by plugging in the numbers. We know that the mass of Saturn M1 has got to be 5.68 times 10 to the power 26 kilograms. And we know the mass of Enceladus is 1.08 times 10 to the power 20 kilograms. So we know the masses and we also uh, know the universal gravitational constant because we can look it up in the data book that is here and you always can find it universal gravitational constant g and it's given a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 don't bother about units at the moment because it's a multiple choice so we can put in our value for g and we can say that g the universal gravitational constant is equal to 6.67 from the data book times 10 to the minus 11 and just leave out the units because you're dealing with a multiple choice so don't bother putting all the units after it let's move the data sheet out of the way and all we have to do is plug in the numbers so we have the r which we're after the radius it's got to be equal to the square root which i'll just write like that now g 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 multiplied by Saturn's mass, 5.68 times 10 to the power 26, and finally multiplied by Enceladus, 1.08 times 10 to the power 20. Now, I always like to put that in a bracket because it's very important that you tidy up your work and put it in a bracket. That's all got to divided by the force between the two planets and uh, between the two uh, objects and the force we're told is 7.24 7.24 times 10 to the power 19 newtons remember we've got to take the square root of everything in that there now if you do that very calmly in your calculator you should get an answer of the radius between the two objects is 2.38 times 10 to the power 8 meters and that's our answer which we'll see is answer a now a few tips for this question you have to be ready to rearrange the universal law of gravitation you have to be very good at rearranging that you always should be able to put in a small diagram to see what you're doing as we've done up the top there and when you're doing the actual calculation itself, remember if you're after the radius, you have to take the square root and you have to bracket things in order to put things into your calculator properly.
Finally, check if your answer is quite sensible. 2.38 times 10 to the power 8 metres is sensible enough, and we just check our answer to give us our answer A. Question 6 from Section 1 of the 2018 Higher Physics Exam. A spacecraft is travelling at 0 0.10 c relative to a star. That means 0 0.10 times the speed of light. c is given the symbol for the speed of light because the speed of light is so important. An observer on a, sp on a spacecraft measures the speed of light emitted by the star to be what? Well, here we go then as a star and we know that light is emitted from the star and light is emitted from the star at a speed c, which you know is equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 metres per second. Now along comes the spacecraft, and say the spacecraft is approaching the star, a spacecraft is approaching at a speed of 0.1c, so the spacecraft is approaching at 0.10c. So what will that measure the speed of light to be coming from the star? Well, it's all down to this man here, a famous Albert Einstein. And it was Albert Einstein who said the following. He said, the speed of light is the same for all observers, regardless of the relative frame of reference. So what does that mean for us? It means that for someone on that spaceship, they will measure the light coming from that star to be the speed of light, C. 3 times 10 to per 8 metres per second. Even if the spacecraft is moving away from the star with a speed of 0 0.10c, they'll still measure the speed of light of that star to be c, 3 times 10 to per 8 metres per second. So no matter where you go in this universe, the speed of light is a fundamental constant. It doesn't make one difference of how you're approaching the light source. You will measure the speed of light coming from that source as the speed of light, C. So the answer to that one is, believe it or not, C.